Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Left, the Right, and the Absurd, Anarcho-Capitalist Edition. My name is Patrick. I'm going to be your host tonight um, with Eric here, and we're going to take you through some of the basic tenets of anarcho-capitalism and like the society that we would want to see um, in following its implementation. So, Eric, you want to go ahead and introduce yourself? Yeah, uh, I'm Eric. I'm an anarcho-capitalist like Patrick. Uh, I, however, differ on a few things, which we'll definitely get into more like more than likely get into in the course of this discussion so i think uh we should go ahead and dive right into the just the basic tenets of anarcho-capitalism and what it is and uh what it advocates for sure so eric if you want to kind of hit the main points and i'll add in what i what i think you missed go ahead all right so basically <laughs> anarcho-capitalism is the idea that the state or the government needs to be abolished because it is unjust and illegitimate and uh, in its place would be a free market economy with no regulations and uh, everything's privatized and things are funded voluntarily. It's based on voluntary interactions uh, between consenting parties and there's no, no use of force to uh, make people behave in certain ways uh, unless they're aggressing against other people, which... Uh, is a topic that we'll definitely get into. We'll probably today, but probably. I think that's just that covers it. <laughs> yeah. So like I, I, I'll, I'll add that uh, individuality, indiv individual sovereignty is is uh, very very important. As is uh, private pro property. That's a huge one. And uh, yeah, as right. you talked about, free markets is pretty important too. But um, <laughs> a lot of uh, the arguments against anarcho capitalism is, oh well, who's going to provide for police courts? Who's going to pave the roads? Who's going to keep us all safe and make sure that we don't delve? And, and fall into this, uh, this, this state of the quote-unquote anarchy where everyone's rioting in the streets and, and eating each other. So um, I think right, a lot of those are just what-ifs yeah. that people don't take more than five seconds to really think about. I mean, like, if you apply any economic thought and, like, have any knowledge of uh, how incentives work and, like, why people act, it's like, uh, it's like, uh, fucking, what's his name? Um, uh, Ludwig von Mises, uh, Mises' book, yeah. Human Action, like it's, it's how people behave and interact in market environments. So, like, if you have any knowledge of that, it doesn't take very long to think these things through and how these how these things could be accomplished without without violence. Right. So, and I think that that's a very very important one is that that uh, at least for me that the initiation of force um, is inherently evil. I mean, if you're attacking someone and initiating their their individual sovereignty. Uh, for no reason, that is that is wrong, right? So, I, I, it, uh, Eric, I'm sure you disagree with me on this, but there's a principle in anarcho-capitalism called called the NAP, the Non-Aggression Principle, which basically states that no one should aggress against any other person except in self-defense. And Eric, I know you probably disagree with me, so if you want to tell me why, that'd be great. Right? Yeah, like we were talking about this before we uh, started the pro uh, the broadcast. My main uh, issue with that is is the NAP is a moral philosophy, and I myself am a nihilist. I don't believe, in, or I, I reject the belief in objective morality, which the NAP is. And so I think it's a good idea like for people not to aggress against people because it usually <laughs> tends to have better outcomes overall. But uh, to assert that it's quote-unquote moral or evil to do so or not do so, I think is just... Uh, it's it's I don't think it's philosophically uh, sound. Is, so guess. you're you disagree with it on philosophical uh, grounds and not on uh, political grounds. Right. Yeah. Like I, I fucking hate the state. Like, don't, don't right. misunderstand me. Like, I hate everything the state is about. But like, I just don't assert it from like a moral standpoint that we need to abolish the state. I just say that, like, I fucking hate what it does. And I think it's like really bad that. Well, I say bad, like, I just, it's, it's annoying that they fucking, like, murder people and start all these wars, like, whenever it's just completely unnecessary <laughs> and the loss of life and the just absolute economic destruction that comes along with it is completely superfluous and it just needs to, like, it, it needs to stop and, like, it could be done much more efficiently without all the violence and all the death. And all right, and I, I think the basic idea behind anarcho-capitalism is freedom, right? I mean, you're trying right, yeah. to get society where the government is not telling you what to do. They're not dictating your social economic behaviors by law. Yeah, because they don't fucking exist. Right, because the government doesn't exist. And I think in the current system we have now, it has we have this system where 
armed men can come and rob, assault, and kidnap and murder you with impunity, whether or not you've actually done anything that's illegal or wrong in the eyes of the state. Of course, the state can't dictate moral morality, right? I mean, slavery was legal uh, in the, under the state, and the genocide of the Jews in World War II was legal under the state, right? So the state can't give these arbitrary this arbitrary morality <laughs> because the state is inherently evil, right? It relies on coercive taxation to remain in place. And it aggresses against anyone who disagrees with it. Right. I hear people oftentimes trying to justify uh, the law like with itself. They try to use the law as like a self-justifying thing or whatever. They're right. like, oh, well, it's a law. You have to respect it or whatever. But I mean, like you mentioned, you know, fucking the Holocaust was legal. Slavery was legal. Like all the shit that people perceive as quote unquote bad or like all the shit that people say they really, really hate has been legal at one point. And so to use the state as a barometer for ethics or morality, I think in my mind is just like intellectually lazy. They're just like, oh, well, I don't have time or the the intellectual capacity to think about this issue and maybe why or why this should not be a thing. So I'm just going to defer it to the state and let them make the decision for me, which I think is just fucking retarded. And that's why you have so many fucking issues today. Because people just don't think about shit, and they're just like, oh, well, I don't have an answer, thus state. And right. there you run into a lot of issues. And I think that a lot of people, when you say the government is evil or the state is evil, they say, oh, well, no, it's not evil. Well, let's look at this from a number of century alone. Governments, just governments, not during war, have killed 260 million of them. If you add war to the mix, it's 300 people that have died as a direct result of government, Right. Any ability to murder that many at all needs to be abolished, period. Right, and people think that like somehow non-state actors are capable of acting in a way that is more destructive and violent and dangerous and deadly than state actors are currently acting or have acted in the past. Right. Which we have like data to suggest that private murders are like, I, I don't know, like way the fuck less than how many people were killed by governments and with war in the last century. Right. Like it just, it's, it's absolutely absurd to say that people who do not have we nuclear weapons, tanks, uh, standing armies, uh, jets and bombs could cause the same amount of destruction and death that the state has. Like, that's just, that's absurd. Demonstrably false. Right. Demonstrably false. Another argument that I think is, I see a lot, at least, is, oh, well, what's going to happen when the corporations are able to run free and not have any regulation? They're just going to kill everyone and give us all bad products. And I think that it's, <laughs> it's kind of a foolish argument to make because, one, a corporation is not possible without a government, right? A corporation, right. I, th that's government something that's really key to understand is, like, right. a corporation is not... <clears throat> Okay, uh, by definition, cannot exist w in the absence of the state because a corporation is just a legal, like it's a legal term for a uh, like a company. It's just a legal yeah. shield to shield people from responsibility. It doesn't yeah. make them anything else. Like they're still a business, but whenever they have it's corporate status, they're exempt from responsibility. <laughs> so, like in the free market, whenever you don't have corporate respons or like or whenever you can't be a corporation, say like you pollute a river or whatever. Like you yourself are personally liable because you own the company and whatever happens under your like you, you, you have jurisdiction over your company. So whatever happens under your control of the company is your responsibility. That's you don't just get to defer it and pass your costs on or like pay some fees or whatever and then get off the hook. That's not how it's not how it works. And I think it's funny because one of the best like one of the arguments I see the most on this is, oh, well, BP was able to just pour oil into the Gulf of Mexico and really face, they had faced zero uh, ramifications and punishments because of it. And I, I respond with yes. And that is as a direct result of the state, right? Because they right. have a corporation and the people at the top of the of the corporation, nothing happens to them. The people that were responsible for the spill, nothing happens to them. And the result being that BP is now having one of the highest profit margins they've ever had as the direct result of their co uh, collaborating with government to, to do so. Right. So, so I think next we are probably ought to talk about um, just like yeah, some yeah. common objections that people have. Like, uh, I know this will sound silly to anybody who's actually an anarcho-capitalist and understands these ideas, but one of the co most common objections we have will, is, uh, well, who will build the roads? 
or like who will pay for these that's things. such a i think it's a hilarious argument because they act as if governments uh don't contract that out already yeah right? i mean the, go- the whenever the government builds a road they just fucking take your money and just contract it out to a private firm that does it now anyway at an efficient so, I mean, at an efficiency level and a uh a cost that's way higher than if individuals have done it right I mean, like, the government's so fucking bad at, like, maintaining the roads that, like, thousands of people die on them because of how shittily they're constructed and designed, and they do an awful job of maintaining them. Like, I saw saw this um, uh, post, I think, on Facebook or whatever, like, these these people went out, like, the government in one one city uh, didn't come out and, like, fix the road for, like, (laughs) fucking ever. They had a shitload of potholes, so people were like, fuck this, like, we're tired of driving on this shitty road went out and fix it themselves so i mean like you could have communities of people working together to fix this or the most common solution obviously would be people voluntarily fund like a road say say they want a road somewhere like you just contract it out it's like any other good or service right. that you go and buy like it's no different right and i and i think the thing is, is that people can make decisions for themselves way better than governments can and they are able to efficiently spend their money on the best company possible at the lowest cost Right, right. They will and, do what's best for them, regardless, which is way different from what happens if you contract it out to government. Right. People seem to think that government is like all knowing or whatever, and that they have like a fucking superior ability to like manage an economy, which is just flat. It's just horseshit. Like they, they there's, uh, they have no possible way of knowing all the knowledge that's in a market. So no for does. someone to say that, yeah, nobody does, and like that's the whole point. So. Nobody is going to know how to best manage your money other than you because nobody's going to have as much information or facts or be like as intimately familiar with your situation as you are. So to assume that you are going to have money taken from you and given to someone else who's never met you and never will met you or meet you and then say that they will spend your money in a manner more efficiently and like in a in a way that will produce more positive outcomes than you could is just absolutely insane. It's ridiculous, and that's—I mean—that's a very good argument against central planning in general. But um, I think one of the things, another thing that I hear a lot is, "Oh, well, well, everyone's just going to be rioting and, and eating each other in the streets and killing each other." And I think people just forget that courts and law can still happen uh, in this sort of of uh, a society. But the the only difference being is that no one has a monopoly on force in the way that you see now, right? So there would be many competing. There'd be many competing firms for law, for protection, uh, for many different things that could be acting in the place of courts or police uh, as we see them now. Same with fire departments and stuff like that. Um, And to think that there wouldn't be, I think, is just, uh, it's absurd to think that because people will do what's best for people, right? People are looking for their self-interest. Governments are not. Governments are looking out for the best interest of who can elect them and they're not as corporations, right? Right. So, so people can make decisions for people way better than governments can make decisions for people. Right. I mean, it's absolute horseshit too. Someone's like, "Oh, there would just no like everybody would kill everybody, and there would be like nobody to protect anybody, and you'd die like without the cops." I hear that all the time whenever I'm debating cop apologists or whatever. They're like, "Oh yeah, well without the police, you'd be dead in like five minutes." It's like uh, I doubt it because there's quite quite the market demand for security and protection like people need to feel safe like that's a thing that they fucking really really want so i mean they're going to be willing to pay for it so to assume that there's like absolutely no way that you could protect yourself or have any sort (laughs) of like way to avoid harm coming to you is just insane like if you have such a high demand for protection in a society there's going to be a supply to come in and fill that market demand because there's a profit motive for that like right you would make an absolute like you'd be an idiot not to right and the thing is there would be so many companies competing against each other the price would be so low that again you'd be remiss if you didn't because that would be something that you would foolishly not do to protect yourself exactly and it's like it's like life or health insurance now. I mean, if you don't have it, I mean, obviously you don't have to have it. Well, not health health insurance you do, but like life insurance, you don't have to have it. But once right. you reach that point where you're close, you like there's a possibility that you could die. You, it's in your best interest and the best interest of the people in your family that you take out a life insurance policy. It would be no different for a protection policy with these independent uh, policing firms. 
Yeah, definitely. I mean, and <laughs> people people just like like to conflate these issues because, like, like I said earlier, they don't they get to a point where they're like, well, I don't fucking have a, a solution to this problem, and I'm scared, so state. I mean, they just defer responsibility or defer like any obligation to think for themselves and just put it on the state, which is again why you have all these state programs that never go away because everybody's like, oh, well, I don't have a solution. The government <laughs> should just solve all of our fucking problems. Like that's why you're in. That's why you see the situation that you have now that fucking sucks. Absolutely. And and to think that, and I, I think that's a good point that you just raised, is that people are not all that intelligent, right? People are pretty stupid. Right. So to say that people can get together and democratically elect a government that's not going to be just as evil or stupid as they are is a pretty stupid assertion. Yeah, definitely. I mean, like, it's, it's the argument that if people are too dumb to rule themselves, then you can't have a government because... A government is made out of people, and as we said, people are too stupid to rule themselves. And if people can rule themselves, you have no need for a government, because if they can rule themselves, you don't need to elect people to rule over them. It's just right. absolutely absurd, either way you slice it. And like I said earlier, it's this idea that people can look after themselves as people for themselves than a government can. And that's, that's, a, simple, that's a simple reality, and I, I think it's absolutely ridiculous when you have a problem that confronts a society that more often than not is actually created by government and people scream, oh, I need more government to solve the problem. No, this is demonstrably false. And if you actually believe that, you'd be better off killing yourself than breathing the same air as I do. Yeah, I agree with that sentiment 100%. <laughs> so uh, now, it says we're all there right now. Like, are we, are we still on? We are, we are live. Yes, we are okay. live. Anyway, all right, go on. So I think uh, I probably ought to move on to how we might implement this, or do you have other things that common objections? No, that, that you think that's a good do? one. I mean, obviously, voting doesn't work because I mean, we've talked about this, right? Corporations right. control elections. Corporations are able to gain market share by using government, and the result is is that we have a government that's ever more expanding. It's it was constitutionally supposed to be the smallest, and now we have the largest government in the history of mankind. So um, right. this is not going to be achieved by voting. And while I would love it to be, I don't see it happening. So Right. And whenever I'm having these discussions <laughs> with people that are saying, or it's usually libertarians that are saying, well, if we just get a libertarian candidate in there or a libertarian for president or whatever, then it will start to move the country in the right direction and all this other stuff. But it's like the problem with having a libertarian president is that you have to convince 51% or 50.01 uh, percent of the voting population that your candidate and your ideology is the best thing for the society, which is just like Never that's point. such that's such a tall order that like it would <clears throat> anybody that can think about that for five seconds would get that. Right. Especially so, in the way that we see elections now, if libertarians take what point five percent of the of the popular vote. One per one percent if they're fucking lucky. Like right. it's they, they don't get anything. <laughs> And the thing is, is the funding to the people that actually want to grow the state is so much larger than that that it's going to actually shrink the state. I don't see it plausible that that a libertarian-minded candidate would be elected. And no, not not now. And I, I think you'd need like <laughs> such a match of massive culture shift that if you had it, I don't think voting would even be necessary anymore because people would be like, look, "Fuck this shit, we're done. Like we're right, not gonna yeah. we're not gonna do the state thing anymore." And I've talked about this earlier, but this whole entitlement generation thing, it, that would never happen. Because people are like, oh, I'm entitled to free shit just because I breathe air. And that's, right. that's false, right? So, no, I no. And and one of the reasons I became an anarchist, because I was a lib cap for a long time, libertarian cap. Yeah, I remember. I was there for, I was there for a long, long time. And I, I finally realized that, you know, the state is an ever-growing uh, – it's an ever-growing thing, right? It, it will always – attempt to grow regardless of what holds you try to put on it so to say that uh, a government is not only going to shrink but is going to stay small is absolutely ridiculous so the only uh, solution that I could then find to fix all of society's problems is to abolish it entirely right and I don't know if you've seen uh, Stefan Molyneux actually has a pretty good video on this it's called the story of your enslavement where he talks or I don't know if it's – I'm pretty sure it's that one, but, like, he's talked about it a bunch of times, like, where he, he's talked about how the United States started with one of the – with the smallest government in the history of mankind, and then it allowed taxation, 
And so people are like the, the small government allow, there wasn't very many economic restrictions. So people were able to produce and like be successful. And so right. the government was like, well, now we're going to impose taxes and we're going to take a little bit of your money. And so the government took some money and then it grew. And then people, you know, were like, well, whatever, fine. I'm still making a shitload of money. And then so like the government just continued to grow little by little, the more money they took and the more people there were and the more people that produced. And so eventually like it was just this, tiny like incremental like encroachments on people's freedom and then now you have the yeah, biggest no state in the history of mankind like it's just to, to say that you can start out with a small state and keep it small is like demonstrably false because that was the whole point of the american constitution was to start out with a really small state it was like an experiment with that and uh it i'd say it utterly failed yes it absolutely failed and to think that the founding fathers of this nation revolted over a three percent t tax is something that I think is amazing because we now have what an average of 35% income tax maybe. And obviously I mean 1913 the year was a was I believe the beginning of the end of this republic. And I mean I say that because three big things happened that year. Firstly, the 16th amendment was passed making the income tax legal, right? So mm -hmm. obviously I I think it's unconstitutional and I think that it's something that never should have happened. Two, the 17th Amendment, direct election of senators. This was the last vestige of states' rights. They had been eroded for the, for the entirety of the republic, and now they are gone. And finally, obviously, the Federal Reserve, which if you were an Austrian, um, which I think you are, um, you understand that the Fed creates more problems than it solves, if it solves any. Um, you can see this in the, the, uh, the Great Depression um, and also the housing crisis that happened in 2008. Um, and, and these three things we're really the beginning of the end and obviously we fought two wars we, we got involved overseas in places that we never should have to protect our quote-unquote right. interests the result being is now we have a global empire that has been is unrivaled in the entirety of human history um, but we don't call ourselves an empire right people are so oblivious that oh well we have bases in 140 different countries what so yeah, um, yeah I mean and <laughs> we might be getting off topic from from uh, anarcho-capitalism here but I think it like you said uh, the great experiment of de of democracy and 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 the United States has has completely failed. <laughs> yeah, I agree. So uh, the solution then, uh, in my eyes, is to uh, violently overthrow the government. And I know that's a scary thought for a lot, of, a people. lot of people. And uh, yeah, a lot of people. It's it's yeah. not uh, not something people like to hear. But um, I I think that is the only way that. <laughs> you will ever achieve the, uh, the shift necessary to move towards a free society. Because, I mean, like we just talked about, voting obviously has not worked out. Um, that's been an utter disaster. Of course. But if you are to forcibly uh, prevent people from using the machinations of the state to force you to do something and take your money, then whenever the state is no longer an option, people have to seek all their alternatives and then they come up with new strategies to solve their problems instead of resorting to violence. So um, <coughs> one, of, one of my favorite, favorite um, examples of this is say you like you just get 5% of the population that says, fuck it, we're not going to be we're not going to like we're not going to allow the state to do this anymore. Like we are going to become ungovernable. So you have one in 20 people that would start shooting government agents uh, whenever they whenever happen they to encounter them. And, I mean, like, those people would fucking quit their jobs in a heartbeat. Like, nobody's just going to go to work with a 1 in 20% chance, or, I'm sorry, a 1 in 20 chance of being fucking killed. Like, nobody's going to do that. They're going to, like, oh, well, maybe <laughs> I should, like, go be pr a productive member so of society and, like, quit fucking stealing from people and threatening people with violence on the highway for fucking not wearing a seatbelt. Like, it, people aren't just going to stay in a line of work where they're going to die, like, eventually. Right. Like, th there's no way that that'll happen. So, I mean, you, you have that scenario where people are willing to use force and say, fuck you, like, we're, we're, we're done putting up with your shit, like, then, it, then it's going to stop. But, like, you don't, have, you don't have that many people. Right. And I, I think our country here has a very, I mean, we're a great country, uh, a serious organized crime problem that most people refer to as the state. Right. right. We have people that violently assault, rob, kidnap, and murder people without fear of repercussions. Like, like a cop can kill somebody in the wrong or in the right. Nine times out of ten, they're on vacation. Right. 
right? right. That's of where we live right now. And I, I know people are bringing a racial aspect to this, which I think is absolutely ridiculous. A white cop shooting a black kid and the nothing. I, I, yeah, it's like I don't fucking care who the state's killing. This like the anim- your enemy is the state. It doesn't matter what your fucking race is. It's not right. kill whitey because you're black and a white police officer killed you. It's like no, he's, he's the fucking state. Like black police <laughs> officers kill people all the time too. Like, right. Asian police officers, Mexican police officers. Like it doesn't the <laughs> race. Race is not a fucking issue here. Like the issue is the state, and that's what people. People just obfuscate that because they're like, oh, no, the government, the government would never hurt us or they'd never do that to us. They're just they're here for our benefit. Like, I mean, and you can get into that whole thing with people, which is oh, just blatantly yeah. false. If you've ever studied history, you know what Operation Northwoods is, right? You know what it is, right? right? Yeah. So the U.S. government uh, wanted, or the CIA uh, wanted to carry out false flag attacks on United States citizens, blame it on Cuba and go to war, right? JFK says, no, thank God, you know, he gets assassinated. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's why, but it, 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 this idea that government is this benevolent overlooker is absolutely—it's so ridiculously false that it's very, very frightening to me to see people that still believe in it. Well, I mean, I think that um, a lot of that stems from you know public school education, right? Absolutely. Like you're yep. just—you spent 13 <laughs> years of your life in this fucking in this place where they just tell you, "Oh no, the government's here for your benefit." I mean, I remember I took. Uh, AP government whenever I was in high school and they were like, oh yeah, well, you know, the deal with government is like you give up some of your freedoms for protection and security and the government was here to take care of you and all this other Fuck. shit. It's like, that's that's just like blatantly false. I mean, I believed it at the time because I didn't know any better, but like, like well, if, that's the thing. If, yeah, that's and, a, that, and that's the thing, but like no, nobody ever gets past that point where they're just like, you're getting, in, and you're getting oh. indoctrinated at a young age that the state is this benevolent thing and it's not. Right, I mean, like, you can't expect any, like, objective look at, at the state from a government school, right? Like, I mean, that's just conflict of interest. Like, you're having right. a state... Yeah. T- that'd be like Coca-Cola... That'd be like Coca-Cola... Fuck, I'm sorry. <laughs> I can't say it. Coca-Cola telling you that their products don't, like, cause oh. your teeth to, like... You, like, don't cause you to get cavities or whatever. Like, it's just not true. They're like, oh, yeah, Coca-Cola is great and it gives you superpowers. I mean, like... You have an independent study that's like, oh, well, actually, they cause cavities, and it's really bad for your health. All this other shit. Coca-Cola would never tell you that information, right? Like, their whole goal is to, like, sell you Coke, and they don't. This, like, they, they have no incentive to just tell you that. So it's the same thing with the state. They have no incentive to tell you, like, the true nature of the state. They're going to be like, oh, yeah, of course. Like, believe that we're here for your benefits so we can keep getting elected, and we can steal your money and have all these nice benefits and shit, like, and just be in power and rule over you, which is fucking, it's, it's, it's just stupid. And the elites in power are going to continue to hold on to their power. They're going to get wealthier, not necessarily at the expense, at the expense of the poor, but definitely not helping the poor or the middle right. class, but they're going to get richer. They're going to help out their little corporate buddies. And the entire system becomes this corporate as bullshit, uh, cat, like crony capitalist system that leftists are then able to rail against. Oh, capitalism did this. This is so evil. No. This is not capitalism. This is not a laissez-faire free market, like people would claim that it is. This is well. A- I have to disagree that it's like whenever you say it's not capitalism, right. like well, it, yeah. it, it. Just like if, I mean, I mean, I know that you and I understand the differences, but like for those that don't, the 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 basic two defining uh, as or the basic defining aspect of what makes capitalism capitalism or not capitalism and what makes socialism socialism or not socialism is capitalism is defined by the private ownership of the means of production basically that's uh that the workers do not own it and then socialism is defined by the social or collective means of production which is the workers own the means of production but anyway go on that was just a little clarification but, yeah but i think the modern uh thought when you say capitalism is a free market you right know, I agree. so evil right the free market has driven more people out of poverty in the past two decades to recombine, right? Yeah, and like, you, it, it's. I just want to say it's like a little fucking weird that like people are like, "Oh, the free market did this." Like it's in the fucking name, free market. Like you can't look at our current Possibly. like regulatory well, climate is, and say that we have a free market. Like that's just just intellectually dishonest. Yeah, and and of course, I mean the the leftists that. They're educated. Exploitation of the workers. Not realizing if you take an economics 101 class, you realize that there's both consumer and producer. 
but I think that they just completely disregard the surplus that the consumer, the like. So in the market for labor or surplus, which I would call the consumer surplus and the producer right. surplus, and they completely disregard that first one and say, "Oh, the producer's making more money off the worker. It's it's exploitation." Shut no, no, both exploit quote unquote each other to both of their benefits. Right. But I think the argument against leftism is something that we'll have uh, another day when it goes there, the mutualist and the and prim and the and social Marx. Um, but I, I, I'm good as, as far as this goes of, of kind of outlining the main tenets and the arguments for uh, anarcho-capitalism. I don't know if you want to add anything else. No, yeah, I think we did a pretty good job of giving people a rough outline so that they know what's going on. All right. So, uh, so everybody that's watching or, or is going to watch, thank you for, uh, for tuning in and for staying with us this long. I know we kind of strayed from the topic a little bit, but we appreciate it. Uh, if you have anything to tell us, uh, leave it in the comments. Um, and I know that they're going to go through and do a mutualist one and a, uh, like I said, a Marxist one. I don't know when they're going to do that. We also have the uh, regularly scheduled podcast, Left, the Right, and the Absurd, on Sunday night. Uh, we'll get to that to you and the information to you as soon as we have it. Uh, as for us, thank you for tuning in tonight. Eric, you got anything to say? I'm good. Fuck the state. See you. Fuck the state. Thank you, guys. We appreciate it.